Zeton is commonly believed to be the most powerful kaiju to appear in the original Ultraman series, but did he have the ability to revive an entire army of dead monsters to go to war against Ultraman and the SSSP? Nope, but Geronimon did. And who is Geronimon? Well, that's the question we'll be answering in today's video, by covering the creature's entire behind-the-scenes and in-universe history. Is Geronimon the most powerful monster in Ultraman? Let's find out. Welcome back for yet another Monster Class, students! I'm the Toku Professor, and boy am I excited to dig into today's topic. Geronimon is a pretty special monster to me. Not only is he one of my favorite kaiju that debuted in one of my favorite Ultraman episodes, but I named my huge eBay store filled with hundreds of Toku figures, and some other weird things, after him, so he's kind of my mascot. And from what I can tell, I'm certainly not the only one who really likes this powerful creature. And once this class has come to an end, I have a feeling you'll have joined the Geronimon fan club as well. Let's get started. Geronimon's first major appearance occurred in the highest rated Ultraman episode, The Little Hero, which, as was also the case for Oil SOS, which we covered in the last Ultraman video we did on this channel, was written by Tetsuo Kinjo. In my personal opinion, this may be the greatest episode he ever wrote. Tol Narita did the design for the episode's one brand new monster, and designed him to look like he was wearing the headdress of a Native American chief, probably to reference Geronimon being the leader of an army of monsters in the script. He was named after Geronimo, a famous Native American military leader from the 1800s. Geronimon's suit was modeled by Ryosaku Takayama, and apparently he reused the wire mesh core of the Gamora suit to construct it, which he'd also used to make the Sibozu costume. Must have been a pretty tough mesh. Geronimon's beard... Uh, Sibozu, you're not supposed to be on the screen anymore. Uh, hang on. There we go. One of my favorite aspects of Geronimon's design is that he has a beard. You don't see many monsters with those. The beard was apparently made from a boa. Uh, not the constrictor, the fluffy scarf. The source that makes this claim says that the facial hair was non-flammable. I didn't see any information about it online, but the suit was also equipped with some kind of mechanism which allowed the monster to open and close his mouth. The finished costume has quite a few differences from the concept art it was based on. In addition to Geronimon's main suit, it appears that a styrofoam version was created for Ultraman to hold at the end of the battle. Ultraman, you weakling. Teruo Aragaki got to wear the main suit and play the monster, and Geronimon's roars were apparently slowed down lion noises. Sadamasa Arikawa was the special effects director for the little hero, and the normal director was Kazuho Mitsuda. With the behind-the-scenes background of the monster attended to, we can now jump to Geronimon's role in the show. It took until near the end of The Little Hero for Geronimon to appear on screen, but the effects of his presence were felt long before he showed his face. This incredibly intelligent monster had the ability to somehow bring monsters that Ultraman and the SSSP had defeated back to life, and planned to bring 60 of them back to Japan to destroy the hero in Defense Force. But unfortunately for him, the first kaiju he chose to revive was not exactly on his side. At all. Pigmon was the first monster to reappear, and after playing around in a toy store, he tried to warn the SSSP of Geronimon's evil intentions. But they couldn't understand the monster at first, and began working out a way to translate what the little hero was saying. Meanwhile, Geronimon continued to revive monsters, bringing Duraco and Telestan back to life during the night. The original plan was for Gamora and Red King to be the ones revived for this episode, but their suits were unusable, so these two were brought back instead. Interestingly, Duraco didn't get his wings back, and his hook-shaped claws were replaced with normal hands this time around. Interesting decision. Anyway, moving on. Um, I said moving on. Ugh, here we go again. Don't worry, I'll handle it this time, Professor! You want a piece of me? Hiya! Thanks, little buddy. Anyway, eventually the SSSP were able to decipher Pigmon's warning about the Monster Chief, as he called him. But by that point, only five hours remained before Geronimon revived the other 57 monsters he wanted for his army. With Pigmon as a guide, the heroes set out to find the feathery monster before it was too late. Arriving at Mount Oiwayama, they discovered Duraco and Telestan, and unfortunately, Pigmon was killed during the battle against these kaiju before he could lead them to Geronimon. But luckily, it turns out Geronimon was in that same vicinity, and showed himself after the death of his revived pawns. The SSSP wasted no time in attacking the menace, but he answered by shooting this zero-gravity smoke, which caused the three defense team members to be launched into the air. That looks kind of fun. 
Luckily, Ultraman arrived just in the nick of time and saved the three of them, and then flew over to confront Geronimon, smacking him in the snout with a kick and knocking him over. His dignity hurt, Geronimon quickly got up and approached his adversary. Then, he began shaking his tail, causing dozens of feathers he was able to control to fly up into the air. These harmless-looking objects were actually quite dangerous, and several stuck to Ultraman like quills, causing the hero intense pain. Even after he got the feathers off, he still seemed to be in discomfort, leading me to wonder if there was some poison on the pointy ends. Ultraman tried to hide himself from more of these projectiles, but Geronimon was able to flush the hero out. He also did this funny dance. Ultraman sped through the air trying to lose the colorful feathers, but he just couldn't shake them off, so he ended up having to use his spacium beam to destroy the rest of them. And though I doubt this was intentional on the part of the makers of the show, this could be why he didn't use this attack again for the rest of the match. He may have used up all his spacium. Back on the ground, Geronimon was out of feathers on his tail, so he peered up into the sky trying to spot his opponent. But Ultraman caught him off guard from behind and restrained the monster long enough to pull off all of his remaining feathers. I think the ones on his head were just for show, but Ultraman certainly wasn't taking any chances. Geronimon attempted to counter with his zero gravity smoke, but Ultraman used his ultra barrier to reflect the attack right back at Geronimon, shooting the monster chief up into the air. Just after his color timer began to blink, Ultraman caught the evil creature, and for some reason Geronimon didn't try to shake himself loose. Ultraman nodded to Ide of the SSSP to finish the kaiju off as he struggled under the monster's weight. We kind of missed it since we've only been looking at the monsters, but this entire episode had a genius underlying plot about Ide learning that Ultraman being around does not make him useless. And this moment here caps that entire little character arc off wonderfully. I call this whole theme genius because I think we all have a tendency to view the defense forces in Ultraman shows as pretty pitiful too, because in basically every episode everything they try fails, and Ultraman ends up being the one to save the day. I think it was really smart of Tetsuo Kenjo to turn this sentiment of the viewer into the plot of an episode, which also reminds us viewers of our worth even if we feel overshadowed by others. I do wonder though if Ultraman really needed Ide's help here to finish Geronimon off, or if he was just trying to give him a confidence boost. Based on how exhausted the giant hero looked when it was all over, I think we can surmise that he really did have nothing left in the tank here, which is what I'd like to believe, both because it would mean he really did need Ide, but also because it would mean Geronimon really must be an extremely powerful fighter if Ultraman couldn't finish him off on his own. And considering this does seem to be the case, and remembering that Geronimon is literally powerful enough to revive 60 monsters, I think we may just be able to make the determination that Geronimon is, in fact, the most powerful monster in the original Ultraman show, dethroning Zeton. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. I love that this episode aired just two weeks before the climax of the show. That means Geronimon got to be one of the final three kaiju Ultraman fought in the series. Moving on to the next section of this class, I am sad to report that following Geronimon's first appearance, a major crime was committed by Tsuburaya Productions. Namely, for whatever selfish motive of the people who work there, ever since 1967, the employees of the studio have collaborated in perpetrating the permanent disappearing of Geronimon from any live-action shows. Well, okay, maybe that's a little bit of an overstatement. We have gotten some minor appearances for the kaiju, such as him appearing as a spark doll in Ginga, even though they refused to produce a real-life figure on this scale, or having a cyber card in Ultraman X, or making a few quick appearances in the spin-off show Ultrazone, and stock footage of him sometimes being used in a few minor things. But other than these hardly stellar cameos, and appearing in an episode of a TV drama by Kiyoshi Atsumi, he's not gotten to make any other live-action appearances, and has been restricted to only appearing in these other types of media. I suspect that one reason they haven't brought him back is because it would be difficult to store a suit with real feathers, and Tsuburaya Productions almost always wants to reuse suits these days so they can save money so a costume that can only be used once wouldn't be something they'd want to invest in. And maybe you're thinking, well, perhaps they could just make a Geronimon suit reusable by using fabric or something instead of real feathers. Well, they actually do that with Geronimon stage show suits. And frankly, they don't look as nice. But hopefully someday, Tsuburaya Productions can finally bring back this popular monster for at least one more outing. In the meantime though, we do at least have some nice manga and video game appearances for the monster we can be entertained by. He is a playable monster and opponent in both the PS2 game just called Ultraman, in Ultraman Fighting Evolution Rebirth, in the Wii game Daikaiju Battle Ultra Coliseum DX, and also in the data card game Daikaiju Battle Ultra Monsters. 
In Fighting Evolution Rebirth, he is found in a giant chunk of ice with a slightly new design, and gains a flashing red power-up form, and later becomes a component of the video game exclusive EX Tyrant. He has also a Oh no, not this again! Ugh, why do I feel like this is related to how this video is going to end somehow or something? Uh, I don't know, but I can get rid of this guy for you, Professor! Power it up, uh, Bash! Uh, <laughs> Kashima-kun! You weren't ready to pull the trigger, my man! Uh, mean, mean, mean. Geronimon has also appeared in quite a few different mangas and in Tetsuo Kenjo's Ultraman novel, and these books and comics have done some interesting things with the monster. In the Kenjo novel, he actually did get to revive Gamora and Red King, and was shown to be a space monster who was imported to Earth from another planet, apparently thanks to a group of aliens led by Alien Mephilos. Interestingly, I think Alien Mephilos was also involved in Geronimon's appearance in Ultraman Fighting Evolution Rebirth. It seems that these two may have some kind of connection inside media. In Ultraman Story Zero, Geronimon got to revive a bunch of monsters. A few sources have also mentioned that Geronimon may have been the one to revive Eliking for his unusual appearance in Ultraman Taro. This is actually an idea I really like, because it lends credence to my personal theory that the monsters Geronimon revive come back to life looking rather deformed, as was the case with Duraco losing his wings and hook claws. However, Telestan returned looking basically the same, but eh, I guess some just make it back looking the same and some don't. By the way, don't you get any ideas? Anyway, if I missed any minor appearances for this monster, be sure to leave a comment. Now let's check out Geronimon merchandise. Yes, I've been looking forward to this part of the class, because you see, since Geronimon is one of my favorite monsters and the mascot of my eBay store, which you can visit by clicking the link in the description by the way, over time I've picked up quite a few different Geronimon products for my personal collection. This awesome, sleek looking one was released in 2007 for the Ultra Monster series. Prior to this, Geronimon figures in this line used this mold. This one is from 1994, I think, and this inaccurately colored one, seriously, why did they make him green and pink? That makes no sense! But, oh well, green's my favorite color, is from the 80s, I believe. There are a few other variants of this mold out there as well. I've also got a cool Banpresto Geronimon plush, and, hmm, this guy's green too. I guess Geronimon is like Godzilla. While they are both actually black, they often get depicted as green for some reason. I've also got this great Gashapon figure and a little soft vinyl guy. This is definitely a lot, but if I were to try and pick up every other type of Geronimon product that exists, I'd actually still have a lot of work to do. Bandai and other toy companies have treated the monster pretty well, but not Bullmark. Bullmark did not treat him well. Ugh. The X Plus figure, on the other hand, looks fantastic, and I think it comes with a mini Pigmon too, but it's incredibly rare. If you want to start collecting Geronimon figures or another Toku character, why not check my eBay store? I currently have one of the green and pink Geronimons from the 80s in stock, but it could sell any time, so act fast if you want it. Even if you miss it, though, I have hundreds of other Ultraman Kaiju toys. I'm sure you'll find something else you'd like. Okay, I think that wraps things Professor, up- Professor, I think you better wrap things up! Uh, huh? Yes, um, that's a good idea. Here they come! It's the Alpine! <sighs> what is it, guys? I was just about to ask people to like, subscribe, comment, and follow me on Twitter. Oh, but, 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 you don't understand my, uh... Hey, very good advice. I know. <laughs> uh, but, 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 Geronimon is... He's making the kaiju come back! All, All monsters, monsters attack! Fuck! Wait, no they don't. Huh? <laughs> Geronimon and I are on good terms. He'd never send out an army to attack us. Glad to see you again, fellas. And hi, Geronimon. Huh? Yep, store's still in business. Uh... Hey, since we're all here, why don't we all just go pick up some ice cream? Let's go. Uh, wow. I thought for sure this was gonna be the part where things didn't end well for the professor again. I guess the script was flipped. Yeah, flipped. Like this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's the meaning of this? Just proving your point. <laughs> <laughs>